Hey guys, welcome back to Problem Up Chem. We are soldiering on through Unit 9 and 19 redox processes, and today we've landed on standard electrode potentials. So, firstly, we're going to be introducing what electromotive force is, what the standard hydrogen electrode is, and then how to calculate electrode potentials and look at how this can help us understand how feasible a reaction is. But as usual, to get started, there's a question on what we were doing on molten electrolysis. Pause the video now and have a go at that. So with this question, hopefully you will have noticed that if we think about an ox cares, we know that sodium and chloride ions are going to move through the electrolyte. So that's definitely gonna be happening. And electrons also move through the external circuit. And we know from an ox cares that oxidation happens at the anode and reduction happens at the cathode. So indeed, one, two, and three are all true. And so therefore, the answer is, of course, D. So firstly, we're going to introduce electromotive force. Now, EMF or electromotive force is the generation of a potential difference between two half cells. So we can compare any two half cells and the voltage or potential difference they provide, they generate between each other, we call the electromotive force. Now, it takes a long time to work these out. So we kind of need a standard and by standard, we can measure against and the reason for this is if i connect two half cells as in this kind of schematic diagram here and we get let's say a 1.12 volt voltage or emf then how do i know which half cell contributed what and that's where we get a need for our standard something we can set to zero volts that we can measure all of the other half cells against and once we measure the half cells uh, stp then we can theoretically predict what any other cell may produce. We call this the standard hydrogen electrode or SHE. Now, you have to be able to draw this and know all of the components of this. So pay attention here. Now, because hydrogen is a gas, we need a way to provide hydrogen and not lose it to the atmosphere. So we have this kind of upturned test tube with an entry point at the side, and we have a platinum wire with a platinum electrode. So we provide H2 gas going into the side at one bar, which is one atmosphere. And we have the temperature at 298 for STP. And we have a one mole per decimeter solution of H plus in solution we have a platinum black electrode and platinum black is basically a very high surface area electrode which isn't reactive and so this allows us to set up the equilibrium of h plus going to h2 gas this half cell we use this half cell we can connect it to another half cell we set at a value of zero volts now if the overall cell value is negative then the she acts as a cathode and if it is positive then it acts as an anode because either the electrons are moving towards or away from the standard hydrogen electrode but the important part here is this is our zero this is what we use to measure other potential electrodes so what we can do is if we standardize another half cell we can connect that half cell to the standard hydrogen electrode and the outcome allows us to produce a list of comparative values and this is what you have on table 24 of your data booklet the standard electrode potential of all of these different elements the reduction potentials versus that standard hydrogen electrode in fact you'll see see the reaction for the standard hydrogen electrode at zero zero and this is the standard hydrogen electrode relative to anything else which is why you get a value of zero for the standard hydrogen electrode and so you'll see all of these values are given effectively as reduction potentials so it's measuring how much that wants to get reduced compared to the standard hydrogen electrode the unit is given in 
is in volts and this is just an example a little snippet of that data table so you want to make sure that you are comfortable with using this table it's table 24 as i've said of your data booklet and it's good to always have that alongside you while we're doing this topic and doing questions on these so we're going to use a simple equation to be able to actually calculate these values so when we're asked to calculate the overall e cell that's the standard cell potential with this e theta cell we're going to do the value of the half cell the reduced half cell plus the oxidized half cell now remember all of the values you get given on your table of table 24 are given as reduction potentials so we're going to have to invert the value for our oxidation half cell so just bear in mind that as we go through our calculations but all we have to do is flip the sign to make sure that we get the right value and that gives us the theoretical potential difference of the cell in standard conditions now a little tip as we're getting started on these calculations is that if you flip the sign of your most negative cell potential that is going to be the one that is going to be oxidized so just a little tip for as you get used to the calculations flip the sign of the least positive or more negative half cell value so let's have a look at an example before we get you doing a question let's take the lithium manganese cell make sure that you have your data booklet with you for doing these questions as you can follow along so the equation for lithium the reduction equation for lithium and the reduction reduction equation for manganese can be, both be found on that table and we can take the cell values so we've got minus 3.04 and minus 1.18 now we can see that the most negative as in our lithium is actually going to be oxidized so lithium is going to go in the other direction so we have lithium goes to li plus e because remember we need the e cell value is going to be equals the reduced plus the oxidized so we've got minus 1.18 plus 3.04 because we flip that sign because we've flipped the equation which gives us 1.86 volts so of course the calculation not particularly difficult here at all the main part of this question is identifying your two half equations and which one is going to go in which direction which one's going to be oxidized and which one will be reduced and then flipping the sign of the oxidized equation let's get you going at a question for that so i want you to determine the potential of a manganese bromine cell pause the video here to have a go at that pop them up so for this one hopefully you saw that you need to flip the sign of the manganese cell so you get 1.09 plus 1.18 which equals 2.27 volts okay have a go at this one then which is the manganese chlorine cell pause the video to give yourself a moment for that pop them up flipping your most negative value to give the value for oxidation and adding them together which gives you 2.54 volts last one then what is the potential of a lithium chlorine cell pause the video here to give yourself a moment pop them up and again for this one you've got lithium as your most negative so flip the sign for the oxidation gives you a total of 4.4 volts when added together so what do these values really mean well if we take the half cell of the platinum half cell and we connect it to something like a copper half cell and then we look at the overall predicted value the value of that cell which in this case gives us a value of 0.34 volts what does that mean well this means that the reaction is feasible and the reaction will produce a voltage at least those cells connected will produce a voltage and we can use this understanding of a positive cell 
meaning a feasible reaction, to look at reactions that we don't know if they will occur and see if they will be feasible using this method. So let's take the example of will iron 2 react with copper? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out the whole equation here. And you can see it says in the question iron 2, so it's going to be Fe2 plus goes to Fe solid. And there's going to be that redox reaction. So our half cells we're going to use, we're just going to use the half cells. So I'm going to write those out first. So we're going to have the copper half cells. So that's going to be Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu. And we're also uh, going to use the iron equation. So we're going to have Fe2 plus plus two electrons also goes to iron. Now, this is the step you have to be careful with because we have to notice which equation are we using and in what direction. So overall in the equation above, we can see that it is going from Fe2 plus to Fe. So this equation is fine. That's going in the correct direction. However, the other reaction is going from Cu to Cu2 plus. So we're going to do 0 0.45 minus 0 0.34 or plus negative 0 0.34, which gives us a negative 0 0.79 volts. Now that's negative and therefore it is not feasible. It's not a positive voltage so that reaction would not occur. So let's try a hand at another example of zinc ions with magnesium. So again, we've got zinc ions and magnesium metals. So I write out my overall equation, which shows magnesium going to its ion and zinc going to its solid. Using the data booklet to get our half equations, we can see we have zinc two plus plus two electrons goes to zinc, which is a minus 0.76 and magnesium ions gaining electrons to form magnesium metal gives us a value of negative 2.37. Now remember, the in this situation, our magnesium is going in the other direction. So we flip the sign and this gives us a value of 1.61 volts, which is positive and therefore is going to be a feasible reaction. Time to have a go at some questions then. So firstly, would this cell produce a voltage? Pause the video here. Give yourself a moment to think about it. Pop them up. And here you can see the E cell value is given to us and the value is negative. Therefore, no voltage produced, non-spontaneous reaction. Okay, for this next one, I want you to calculate the E cell value and state if the cell would produce a voltage. So pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. Now for this one, you have it with the hydrogen electrode. So you don't, flipping zero doesn't make a difference. So you get a plus 0 0.8 voltage, plus 0 0.8 is positive. Therefore, the reaction is feasible. So in this question, it's asking for which of the half cells would be acting as an anode and which is a cathode. Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. So for this one, you flipped it to get your anode. Your overall E cell is 1.66, which means your hydrogen is acting as your cathode and your anode is aluminium. So now we're able to determine all of this information about cells, we need to make sure we can determine the reaction in a cell. Now, some of you may already worked out how to do this because it's not a new skill, but we wanna make sure that we're piecing these pieces of this unit together. So the more negative half cell is gonna to move to the left as we've discussed, that's the oxidized route, and the more positive will be reduced. We can then combine these to make our overall redox reaction for the cell. And like I said, all we have to do is determine which half equations are in question and flip them in the correct direction, balance the electrons and combine them. So for lithium manganese, which is a cell we looked at earlier, we can see that lithium is most negative. So lithium is going to go to the Li plus plus an electron. So it's gonna be oxidized and the manganese is going to be reduced. 
multiply the lithium equation by two, and then combine them just like any other redox equation to give our overall reaction for the cell. Hopefully you've already kind of thought this through in your head, but we're just making it clear about how to do this. Looking potentially at a manganese copper cell, we look at the values for copper and we look at the values for manganese and we see that manganese has the more negative value so it's going to be oxidized which means it's going to flip direction from what you've got in your booklet so it's going to lose electrons and our copper is of course going to go from cu2 plus to gain two electrons and form copper solid these are already balanced in terms of electrons so we can just add the two equations together and we get our overall redox reaction for the cell. Again, there's no difference between this skill and the other redox equations we've already been doing. So hopefully this isn't something completely new. Just wanted to make sure we're linking those ideas of the unit together. We could even take this one step further and combine all of these different ideas about voltaic cells and draw a fully labeled cell. So for magnesium and copper, in this, we're going to include our electrodes. We're going to include the structure of the setup. So that includes our two half cells, of course, joined by a salt bridge filled with our electrolyte solutions. We can also label the different components here, the movement of electrons. And of course, now we can include the overall equation and which is the anode and which is the cathode. So. In this, which we've already looked at, we said the manganese was going to act as the anode and the cathode was going to be our copper based on their E cell value. So we can write the half equations underneath that, label our salt bridge. So now we know that the electrons are going to transfer from the manganese half cell to the copper half cell. We can also include the concentrations. Remember, if it's E cell values, these are done at STP. So we have to have standard conditions which includes one mole per decimeter concentrations of solutions and then we can include the equation we just made over the top to give a full picture of what is really going on in this cell fantastic so key points here is you're looking at the difference between the two E cell values and you really wanna focus your attention on making sure that the equations you're using are going in the right direction. Remembering that the data booklet only gives you the reduction potentials, those E cell values on table 24, but have a little practice, do some questions and it should become easier and easier. Thanks once again for joining me guys. Remember, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, check out our other channels. You know, it's that pop em up fam. And as always guys, practice makes slightly better.